this is Sam Lowe here for Green Blood Boxing. I'm delighted to be joined by Big Bang, Pierce O'Leary. Pierce, thanks very much for joining me, man. No worries, Sam. It's my pleasure. Pleasure. Fair play to you, man. No, thanks a lot. Um, let's start off with, obviously, the situation that we're all in. We're all stuck in isolation. How are you finding it and how are you managing things? Well, I'm finding it okay. I'm still trying to wear um, twice a day and whatnot. And to, uh, it's actually, it didn't affect me too bad, like, because of, maybe it was just affect me as in uh, boxing gyms and stuff like that, like, you're not actually trying indoor. But now, with the good weather, it will be hard. It's, uh, it's lovely. It's actually a nice... Was change over this that we don't actually need all the luxury stuff that they do the they put the hard work in with. Yeah, where it's all done on the outside now, and yeah, you're getting all the fresh air and, and stuff like that with the scenery. So it's it's um there's a positive side of it now, anyways. So if you look at it, like definitely, definitely, yeah, and like you say with the with the uh the nice weather now coming out the last few days, it is yeah, it's it maybe that kind of different environment. There's nice nice change up maybe for the likes of you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a change up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and okay. even like when you're on the outside down pads and stuff like that, like you get people coming on and saying, just give me little comments and stuff like that. Like, and you're getting actually the people are introducing each other, you know, and you're, you're getting away there, you're getting chatting with them. And you, there you are, then you have to just meet some fella then who we don't know, or a, a woman, say, and um, and you know, they probably made whole day by talking back to her or something like that. It's just something simple, yeah. And it, it, it's just, some, I enjoy, I enjoy trying on the outside, you know, like on the on the grass and maybe a bit of gravel or whatnot, but like yeah, in the open like, in general, it's kind of it's nice, yeah, it's a nice change. Like, you know, you know the stuff where you do in the gym outside, like yeah, and it's just it's so so I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's so nice. that's deadly. It's no, come here, like a good mirror, you know? yeah, yeah, it's nice. That sun as well doesn't it helps, doesn't it? Kind of you do you do that's feel it, good. Of course. Yeah. And uh, how is your kind of like where are you based at the moment? You're back in Dublin, right? But whereabouts? In, in Dublin and like who are you shacked up with and kind of what's your living situation like at the moment? Um yeah I, I, I'm based in, in Dublin down uh Shirtry, not too far, say out maybe two hundred metres, Trans out in the tree arena. Oh yeah, yeah, deadly. Yeah, um reasonably familiar with the area. So yeah, it's um been living here all my life, grew up here. Deadly. Um great area. So but now I'm um I've gone to London now. I will be based in London now shortly when everything's back to normal. Um, That's right. I was going to touch on that. So, yeah, definitely. So we'll touch mm. a little bit more on your training and actually also touch on um, on your trainer, which who is obviously Alan Smith, who's based in in Bromley. Yeah, it's kind of in the in the London area for people who don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you now you're obviously training. You're outdoors. You're running. You're saying you're doing pads and that kind of thing. How much contact do you have with Alan at the moment? Um, or are you having any contact? Is he having any influence on your training at the moment? Yeah, he's been in touch with me. He's, um, he always touches base with me. Um, that's that's a good thing. What I try and like, he always makes sure everything's okay and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. That's good. I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll do a good man, and um, he just touches base with me all the time and asks how's things. I hope the training's going well and stuff like that. Stay safe for you and your family and stuff. So yeah, it's good having having a a good guy like that around you. You know. Definitely, definitely. Um, has he had much impact on your training? Are you doing any kind of technical sessions over Zoom or the kind of online platforms, or is it more just touch and base and just kind of general management? Uh, just touch and base, like not not in two series. You know, like it's up to yeah. you to put the hard work in, and that's it. Yeah. Um, look, even if it was the Zoom, like it, it it's not gonna matter. Like you know, mm. it's, it really is not gonna matter because you can just like. You have, to, you have to remember, like, you're training on your own, like, so it's up to you whether you want to put the hard work in, whether it's on Zoom or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we don't know, like, but for me, I always just find it nice and just go out and do my own thing. I always yeah. have a routine, and because I, I live by, like, if you have no routine, like, it's staggered. Yeah, definitely. I think definitely. having a routine is, having a routine sets you free. You know? It does, in a kind of a, that's, that's a, it's strange for people to understand, probably. Having having something that you always do almost does set you free, yeah. But it does. Yeah, I, I yeah, understand does what you really mean. I've had periods in my life where I've had a lot of structure and had no structure, and definitely yeah, structure yeah. is the way to go, isn't it? But um, yeah. what in terms of you're talking there about like working hard, 
and of course it's it's definitely the fighter the fighter's responsibility or the athlete in general it's their responsibility to put the work in but in terms of like technically improving and actually working on um t- technical aspects of your game how does that fit into a time like this and how do you deal with that you know can you improve um certain things or is it more difficult and that's probably more where i was uh where my question about Alan kind of came in, are you, are you trying to improve things? Is he still looking at stuff or is it more just keep fit, keep working hard, uh, you know, keep drilling the stuff you're good at, you know, mm. and then when we get back to the gym, we can kind of start improving again or what, what way you yeah. were? When I went over, um, I, forget what, I actually forgot what date, I think it was the, 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 I think it was the 7th of March or something like that. So it was early March, say. Yeah. Oh, it was actually, sorry, it was the 4th of March. Oh, no, the 2nd, the 2nd. Because my birthday was on the 28th and I went, that was a Friday, and I went over on the Monday. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like when I, when I was with our train, I was on the pad and stuff like that and sparred and whatnot. He saw me. He was really, really impressed. So, he just said, um, Right, we changed her up a little bit. Obviously, done this bit of stunning before, before I arrived. So mm. he knew what I was bringing. Yeah. And what he what what he saw, and um, he really enjoyed it. He, I was what he saw, and, that, and I think that's what uh, what made him more excited to have me with the team. Like, so he knew he was a hard working guy. Definitely. And um, and then just from like I had, like from leaving my family now, just to go over there, like he knows I'm not bullshitting. He knows yeah. it, it's, it's serious and everything's going good, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I yeah, suppose, really, um, go on, go on, okay. Well, I suppose that's what kind of brings me on to, to the next point, I suppose. Why the move? I know you were training in the Coliseum with Pete, right? And and the guys up there for a while, and then you've decided to move on. I was training for- there. Um, I was training with Pete. Um, I think it was in, just before... I think it was in June, say. Yeah, uh, I was I was going pro. I was planning on going pro. Yeah. And, uh, I went over to Pete, trying to wait because Pete invited us out uh, over sparring now a couple, a couple of times again. Like, we had a good friendship and stuff. So we went over. So I went over, trained with him, told him yeah. we're going pro, this and that. I just wanted to see what it was like. And uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And then I went back to my amateur coach then who I made my debut with and I was like I think the I think being back home here is just too much like, it, it, not too much like it's I have everything on my plate here and I, I don't like it yeah so I think I need to um, go away and experience being on my own and being in a full training camp getting out of my, getting out of my comfort zone meeting new people and stuff yeah. like that and so since I've done it it was the best thing ever brilliant so then that leads me on to why Alan Smith? Why the the it's the iBox gym in Bromley, right? Yeah, why, that's right. Why yeah, that yeah. gym? Why that trainer? And uh, yeah, why that particular link up? Um, yeah, I was actually I me mean, a voice of MTK. He was like, uh, well, actually, we we sat and spoke about it, and uh, he was like, he was actually happy enough for the for the change, like to go ahead, and he was like, that'd be a great meal for you if you did that. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Uh, so he said, leave with me on a walk on that way. So he come back to me, he said, uh, a few with a few names, a few big names, coaches. And then um, I was like, okay, will I get the full look in there? Like, will he be just without the big guys? Yeah. He's like, possibility, maybe, yeah, because of, you're in the, you're in the, I'm in the four rounds at the time when I moved. And six rounds would be a bit, like, he won't be actually put the time down until the 8th, the 10th, and the 12th then, obviously. Yeah. So I was like, uh, no, get me to a, Coach that only has a few guys, few hungry, young hungry guys, and um, and Al was the man that were with them. Yeah, you know, and, then, and um, well, actually, before before I even went pro, before I even before I done that, no, um, I went up to um, what's it called? Um, oh, up to the failure, sorry, up to the failure to the Mike Conan show. Yeah, and I was speaking to uh, Kevin, Kevin Hines. I'm actually good friends with Kevin, and um, he. I said, I asked him about he about Al, like at the time, like, I didn't actually know Al. And he was like, yeah, he's very good, this and that. So he spread the word about me to him. And um, Al said, yeah, yeah, he really likes him. 
But it actually blew out my mind. That's when I went with Pete, trying with Pete for a while, and then back to the Amber coach then. And then I only realised then, I was actually looking for a coach like, oh, Kevin. So yeah. It was, it was a great, great move, to be honest with you. I'm really, really, really happy. Brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, that's, that's great to hear. And obviously, it, it, I suppose, being away from home, it kind of maybe does allow you to have that, that focus and maybe takes away some of the distractions that you might have had at home. Um, and, and yeah, maybe just allows you to be a little bit more direct, uh, yeah, more focused in, gen- in general um, on, on what you're trying to achieve. Um, I suppose, moving then on slightly, uh, have MTK been in touch with like proposed dates or has there been anything from them? Um, um, what's the contact been like during this, this period? With, yeah, um, well, still, in, still touch space, we are with each other and stuff like that. But yeah, again, MTK, they, they can only um, do off or what, um, what the BBFC puts out. Well, that's it, yeah. You know, and like, look, when they stick something out, we all know about it. So, yeah, um, it, it's it's just a peak, like, at, with this unfortunate time. But look, yeah, you look at the positive side of it, as I said, stay ready while everyone else is playing, getting fat and stuff like that. So. But, um, that's it. I reckon, please it, God, please God. Do you ever get the temptation? Back. Sorry, do you ever get the temptation to mm-hmm. kind of, to have a couple of beers or to, to eat bad food or, you know, how, how difficult is that for you? Because you seem like a really kind of tunnel vision kind of guy, you know, very, very focused. But do you ever slip up? It's, do you ever... Is this all feeling? like out of camp or in camp? Um, well, right now, say. Just in general, is, just in general, say. In general, uh, but say right now, because if you've no fight, you know, you, we've no certainty of dates. It's just kind of... So maybe trying to stay motivated and trying to stay disciplined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's challenging at times because there's nothing to aim for. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't actually drink. I, um, okay, I'm not perfect. a fan of drinking. I'm not. I drive just. Just. Well, I like. I like the field. I like the field. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> me, me Peter is me probably my favorite. It's your your weak your weak link is it your Achilles heel? That's, that's, that's Peter. Me, yeah, yeah, I can have Peter any time of the day. I could any time. It doesn't matter when it is. Well, have I'm three on, on Sunday, speed dial, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but well, look when when. Um, Look, we're only human, and all we can do is just enjoy ourselves at the time. But yeah. when the when the hard work, when in camp and the hard work gets going, then that's it. Then you just have to be fully disciplined. And, yeah, fair and play. Enjoy the pizza and happy. Yeah, after straight the after the fight, big large. We're a, we're a win. We're a win. Enjoy the exactly. nice noise. <laughs> exactly, man. I mean, talk to me a little bit about MTK actually as well, because this is this is something that I have I have been interested in, like. How infl- they seem to have been massively influential and kind of integral to a lot of fighters' careers now. A lot of kind of young guys coming through, a lot of prospects like yourself. Um, and even guys like even Tyrone McKenna was saying to me the other day, if it wasn't for MTK, he probably would be retired by now. He probably would have had, a, had to pack it in. So, I mean, h- how influential and integral have they been in your career, um, both as a, from the start to now and also getting started, you know, turning pro, how important have they been? Yeah, very important. Um, they gave me great, great experience. Like the, the, um, like I gained some knowledge being with them, stuff like that, they tell me what to do and what not to do, like, and how to do it. Yeah. Um, just be smart, isn't it? Just be, a, just be a smart athlete in all cases around. Um, but yeah, MDK, like, the, like the, they look at the, uh, Fighters, but yeah, to give other fighters opportunities, I like was not even signed with them and things like that. Like, it's just, yeah, it's it's passion for boxing, you know, you know what I mean. And it's, they seem to go above and beyond. There's not, there's not many, not many people like that. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. That, that's that's definitely yeah. something that sticks out. Is that kind of that passion, that willingness to actually to do good for the sport. I mean, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think with sometimes with promoters and stuff, you can you can kind of see their uh, you can see their say their desire for money or whatever you can kind of you can see it in in their actions and what they do but with mtk you're not really seeing that they're that they're doing things for profit or whatever that's not what you see you see well they're just they've signed so many fighters they're helping so many people out they're putting on so many like smaller hall shows um, exactly they're giving really they're different. giving all the they're giving all the smaller smaller guys a chance who can't like obviously for example um how can i put it um 
who say a, a, a guy that who was going pro and hadn't got so much of a background of a, an amateur, like probably boxed two, three years in amateur. Yeah. He'd still give him the opportunity to try make something out of himself and give, give himself a name. Definitely. And then if he goes on, then he goes on and does whatever. But if not, they still give him a chance. They're just, they're just um, yeah, if it wasn't for MDK, like, it'd probably Irish boxing would be, you know, like, it wouldn't be kicked off at all. It'd be very hard for all kind of fighters. Yeah, 100% agree with that. And even a lot of English fighters also, yeah, Europe. 100%, yeah, because they're, I mean, they're they're global. They're signing people all over, you know, in um, in the, the kind of, in the Middle East and stuff, they're big now, and there's a lot of fighters from all over the world getting signed by MPK, for sure. But, um, and that just, that just goes to show, like, you know, a lot, what, what they're capable of doing for it. Definitely, oh, 100%. Um, a big thing for me now, because uh, obviously doing a bit of research for the interview, wanted to kind of know a little bit more about you, obviously, you're, you're far and all, you're a big prospect in Ireland, but it was important to kind of know a little bit about your background. I mean, you were a standout amateur. I mean, obviously, you're quite a young guy, so most of your career would have been at the junior level. But, I mean, the, the big question for me was, why the decision to turn pro so young with, like, the Olympics around the corner? Now, that's another thing I want to get into because, you know, people think, oh, you're very good and... Olympics, why didn't you just go to the Olympics? It's obviously not that simple. You gotta qualify, you have to be number one in your in your weight class in the country, right? Um so there's a few different yeah. factors, but I wanna kinda of get into this with you, like why the decision to turn pro? Why not why not try to, to qualify for the Olympics and talk to me about the, the ins and outs of the amateur setup when you did make your decision to turn pro? <laughs> well, for us I'd like to I'd like to speak about well. As as an amateur, like it's it's very hard to get funding. So and as I was I was growing up now and coming eighteen, nineteen now, like it's it's hard like being from like just say in, in living in Dublin itself, like say. Yeah. Like it's so expensive, stuff like that. You need to you need to get funding on some sort of funding, no matter what what it is. But I wasn't getting that, so um uh, and even if we even if I did get it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so much. It'd be still struggling no matter what. Yeah. So when I went to the Europeans then the under twenty twos, that was in um, that was in February. No, sorry, they were them under twenty twos. Europeans were in March last year. I went to them and obviously I won me four did I win? No, then I actually got lost. I lost, I lost me um me four sorry, and that that was against a Welsh guy. And everyone thought I, was, I, I hired him, like, and okay. I, I even thought myself, like, I was actually shocked. I couldn't believe it because it was because I was putting the pressure on. I was catching him with cleaner shots, um, and that's what the amateur the amateur game now is all about: about yeah. pressure and cleaner shots. And then when I, when when the decision where his hand got put up and mine didn't get raised, it was a uh, it was like a, 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 something stabbed me in the gut, like, it was like, and ripped it, you know. Yeah, I, could, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like, so I was like, um, so I went back home. I, as soon as I got that ring, that I said, That's it, I'm never getting into an amateur again, never fighting for an amateur again. And I stuck me word and yeah, went back to the hotel. I was actually in talks with Amp Pro before that as well. Like, there was always a couple of people on me, and um, uh, got texts and straight away and spoke about things and stuff like that. And then I come back then because I was a bit annoyed, so I come back then and try to let the dust settle. And my gut was just keep telling me just to go pro, go pro, and that was it, went pro. And okay. um, it was probably the best thing to, to do. Like. Interesting, very good, yeah. So there was never, it seems like there wasn't too much thought about about an Olympic medal, about, you know, about accolades at, at amateur level. It was more, you, you've probably always been quite focused on turning pro. Was that always the goal for you as a, as a younger guy? Thinking... Uh, yeah, as a younger guy, it was all, it was all about... The um, Grand Pro was yeah. Being but a professional world champion. It would, that it would, was the dream. would have been nice to represent Ireland in the in the Olympics, of course. Maybe yeah. that's everyone's dream, but I wasn't. It was a dream at one stage, but like it wasn't. It wasn't pushed on it. A bigger dream, so I'm I'm striving for. Yeah. And if it came, it came. But if it didn't, it didn't, and that was it. Like because of the game, the amateur game is so corrupt. I just couldn't. It was heartbreaking. You know, you put all the hard work in for just people around the. In the square circle, just to say, no, I'll go with him. But he doesn't know boxing. I don't know. It's just 
Yeah. Some, sometimes I can't tell really much of puzzle, puzzles me, but um, yeah, I like to just uh, keep focusing now and do my own thing. It is what it is back then. Nothing can change, and just give one hundred twenty percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. No, it's understandable, and that that can be. It sounds like it was obviously awfully disheartening for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's understandable why you became turned pro. And then I suppose the allure, the allure of money, um, the the chance to kind of start making a, a living for yourself at a, at a younger age is obviously quite attractive as well. And like, because you already kind of alluded to, alluded to the fact that it was difficult financially as, a, as an amateur, not easy to find funding. I find it very surprising that you weren't a carded athlete. Like you weren't, you didn't have a, a sports council grant, no? Yeah, well, I did, but yeah, again, it's very small. Like, there's not, there's not much I could do, like, with it. yeah, you know, like it's, it, it's a, uh, like it's, you're not getting a ton of money, like, yeah, like, you wouldn't be getting thousands now. I'll say, I mean, probably debatably, one of, if not the the, the biggest prospects in Ireland. I mean, the likes of Paddy Donovan yourself. I mean, probably t- two of the biggest prospects that we've got at the moment. But I mean, my thing is, how quickly do you want to move now? I mean, I've seen you fight. You look like you're levels above where you are at the moment. You know, you're, it looks like you're, you're ready to step up. You're ready to fight better fighters. But I mean, what do you think? And, and what, do, what does your management and coach think? What kind of rate do you want to move at? Look, to be honest, with the next, with my next fight, I jump into a toilet fight no matter what, like. Oh yeah. But it's okay. just, that's just me. That's just how much I want to get there. But yeah. Sometimes, like me, me manager and stuff like that, like just try to hold me back a little bit with the reins, a little bit, you know, yeah. like, and just go at a nice steady pace and don't rush it and don't over it. Because at the end of the day, I'm still young. Yeah. Times on my side, so I have at least another. Okay, it's got another 12, 15 years at the sport and. And if I'm still healthy and good, I can keep going. Yeah, definitely. But, um, so, uh, like, for me, with time, so, like, my goal for this year, if everything went smooth enough, I'd probably, I was hoping to get um, three or four or six rounders in. And yeah. Then, well, again, then, you know, next year, but, look, that didn't happen. So, we might have to move a little bit quicker this this year than we actually thought. So, yeah. it's not going to be a problem. I'm ready for it and I'm, I'm excited. And as, are there certain titles that you kind of want to win on the way up? Or is there any kind of route that's like kind of semi-planned out? Or is it more just kind of we take a fight by fight and we see how we go? Or Yeah, we just, just take a fight by fight and see what position we keep putting it in every time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think the, I like to fight for the, the Irish title. Yeah. No, I could fight for that probably about four now. But if, we, if we get three fights, say two fights in before Christmas, please God. Everything's okay. I'd say by mid next year, I could fight with a title. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Mm. And I mean, even that, that shows a kind of, a, you want a fairly fast rate of progression, but you're just kind of wary of, I don't want to move too quick, and you're wary that it's probably, it might not be the smartest thing to move too quick either, because you are young, you have a lot of, you kind of, you do have time on your side where you can kind of, you can go through a lot of developmental uh, stages and years in your career, and then, when you're, I think I saw an interview with uh, with you the other talking obviously um, from a few months back. But you were talking about you can kind of afford to give it those few years, and when you're like 25 or whatever, you'll be in such a good position, you know, to be able to fight for world titles, and you'll still be a lot younger than most guys when they get most, to that kind of world yeah. title level. Exactly. So, this is it. This this is another thing. Like, like we'll be like we say 25. World title and stuff like that you'd be facing for. Um, like, you'd be only hit your prime between, say, 28, 22. Yeah. So exactly. you, it's still, like, it's still a lot, of, like, you're still very young, you know? But it's good. Yeah. It's good to know that I have all that front me. I'm excited. 100%. You're obviously signed with MTK, which is a management team who puts on their own fights. But do you want to sign with a promoter? Is that the goal? How and how important do you think it is to sign with a big promoter in terms of kind of navigating, um, navigating your career and kind of making the right steps and the right moves at the right times? I mean, with a promoter, um, like a promoter, um, he he want, he's gonna keep pushing it and keep um, putting in the big fights and stuff like that because 
it's going to be investing in you. Um, yeah. But I, I think, I think starting off and getting Sonny Rick come out, uh, it's good. It's excellent. I think now, uh, but like, uh, it's going to be a lot of hype and stuff like that starting off. And if you get him thrown in there and have a couple of say six fights, eight fights, say with um, good guys, like, yeah. And if you get him tested, we're we're early, so I think um, now a couple might put a bit of mileage on the body, like start, like being doing that, like. But yeah. um, it'd be all right if you are, if you had all the experience already, where it'd be great. Okay. Like look for example for John O'Carroll. John O'Carroll hadn't got um, a promoter until three two years ago, was it? He signed when he signed with Eddie. I think he signed with Eddie. When he won prize fighter, he kind of almost won himself a contract with Matchroom, but they didn't do a lot that's for right, him. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, he right. kind of he, he then he, he left Matchroom and MTK were kind of handling his career. And then yeah. only only a few fights ago he signed back with uh, with exactly. Matchroom as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Not long yeah, exactly. ago, maybe one year ish. And look and look what he done, look what he done and he 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 had he had valued this this the, the explained to him what he what he could do and whatnot because of his previous fights. Yeah. Like he got yeah. in there with zero fights and you could get a shit there or you could get a good there, but if you keep it like if you keep a promoter at distance for a couple of years, you have you're guaranteed a great deal. With with great performance. That's a good point. So if basically yeah. you build up your value Outside of that, outside of that sphere, and then they come looking because they see that That's they it. can turn exactly. you into an asset. Yeah, of course. Like people turn pro and rushing to look for promoters and this and that, like, sign me with these and that. But like, if they if they want to go down that route at fair play, and that's the route they want to go down. But for me now, it's just about getting getting the rounds in and getting all the experience as much as I can, and then start calling the big names out then shortly. Definitely. That, that's it's kind of an interesting take on it, um, and not necessarily one that I expected. But that's that's quite a level-headed approach to it as well. But I mean, there's actually a lot of examples of that, which is which is funny now that you say it. Like the likes of Devin Haney and guys like this who kind of who who kind of did their own thing for a long time, and then mm. they became so sought after that when he does decide to sign with someone, I mean, he makes a rake load of money. He's the he's the face. He's the man that everyone wants everyone wants to watch, and the promoter is putting him into the the headline slots. And really, really pushing yeah, his name, and he kind of, yeah. as as you as you kind of alluded to there, the likes of Devin Haney then can can really maximise everything that he can get out of that deal by by being valuable before he gets signed. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a good point. It's actually yeah. um. Uh, it's that's just the way. Day. That's the way I look at it. Like, that's a, I think it's a boxer's point of view of looking at it. Yeah, you know what I mean. One hundred percent. So it's. But it's a, it's, it's a patient that's, that's way of looking at it as well, you know, it's balanced. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's a lot of patience. It's a lot of patience. Because you could be, be boxing's business now at the end of the day and you can tell you, yeah, we're signing this and that. And then when the signing date is coming, I oh, know we leave it. I don't want to sign it then. Stuff like that, get your hopes up and stuff. That's just yeah. boxing though. That's just the way things are. And people, it's a lot of that with, with uh, signing contracts for fruits. Yeah. They just have to take the good with the bad, and that's it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just talking about the kind of promoter and even the kind of touching very, very smallly, or uh, a little bit on the on the money aspect of things. You were kind of alluded to it earlier on as well about being an amateur and being difficult. I kind of was wondering how how difficult it is being like kind of a prospect, a young pro. How financially difficult is that? You know. Because I can't imagine that the purses for the fights are astronomical. Obviously, you you're getting paid, but um, how difficult how difficult is it? You know, to move away, to train full time, um, to manage every other kind of area of your life. You know, in um, terms of financially. Well, for me now, it's just passion and it's love. So when when you have love and passion, money doesn't really matter at, at a time. Like, yeah. But um, as uh, what you're saying, um. Like that, your professional and stuff like that. Now, before I tell you, like it's a lot easier to get sponsorship now. Yeah. Because it's all it's all shown on TV and sort of interviews and stuff like that, where you haven't really got so much in the amateur. Yeah, definitely. So, how so, important are your sponsors? They must be kind oh, of. Oh, really, really important. Sponsors are really important. Yeah. They, they, they do. They help you out more, so they do for the business. Yeah. And that's just yeah. the truth. Of it. Do you know. 
Definitely. Right? Like small business, like for starting off, people think, they get people out there saying, I want this, I want that, like where you should be lucky if you even get on. Yeah. Because of the help and you, you're not actually help them, you know? Yeah, 100%. That's just the way it is, yeah. You see a lot of you see a lot of guys who, who really struggle to get sponsors, you know, um, mm. and and ta- ta- like talented, um, really like good prospects as well. You see a lot of good fighters who, who struggle with it. So definitely, it's um, it's something to be thankful for, isn't it? But yeah, yeah I just 100%. thought that was an interesting an interesting point to touch on because obviously, it's you know it is you, we hear about this kind of uh, all the money in boxing is kind of at the top, and um, and it was interesting for me to kind of. To, to think about how someone like yourself manages, you know, when, you know, obviously you're fighting regularly enough, so there's a bit of money coming in, but obviously you've got your expense, you're living abroad in England now. <clears throat> you know, it's, a, it's, it's definitely for me an interesting point, but uh, as you said, the sponsors probably help a lot there to kind of fund your day-to-day living. and Yeah, that's, that's it. The, the sponsors and the... The management's like the fights and stuff like that, like, um, that helps you out a lot of those. Yeah. It helps you out a lot. Mm. Oh. So I want to move on a little bit to talk about your weight class. You're campaigning at super lightweight, yeah, 140? 140, yeah. Lovely. So, I mean, it's it's a fairly stacked division. I mean, in, in terms of the world scene, it's it's unbelievable. But in closer to home, kind of Britain and Ireland, are there any names that stick out to you? Is there anyone that you're kind of gunning at or you think, I'd love a crack at that guy? Or is there is there any names that kind of stick out to you? Um, not really, to be honest, no. Not really. No? Um, <laughs> I just, as you're more, more fights you get, the more you move the ranks. And then yeah. If anyone there, if anyone's at the top, then obviously you're going to bounce into them at some stage. Yeah. Really, no one really sticks out as much, no. No. I mean, is there is there any... Fights kind of on an Irish on the Irish level that kind of interest you. So you've got the likes of Dara Foley, he's probably knocking around. Tyrone McKenna is probably you'd have to say number one in terms of Irish one forties, but it's probably uh, um, he's obviously on a slightly different path at the moment. But you've got kind of Dara Foley. I know Anto Upton is around one forty in Ireland. Um, Stevie McKenna, who's obviously based out in the states, he's campaigns at one forty as far as I'm aware. So is there any kind of names that, that you would be interested in fighting in the in the near enough future? I uh, wouldn't mind fighting most of them, like if, if it makes sense. Do you know, yeah. like it wouldn't be like if you pass by it fair enough and if like if you have to meet him, you have to meet him and that, that's just that's just boxing, that's why boxing works. Um I wouldn't be calling I wouldn't be calling anyone out now, like but yeah. It'd be a time where you'd be calling everyone else just to get the, get a title shot, like get a going for yeah. um, Kind of waiting your turn for the moment. I, who, was, who was the the Irish champion, my way? The Irish champion in 140. I'm trying to think who the Irish champion in 140 is. Oh, yeah. Is, um, it, I'm is it Victor? Sure. Is it? it could be Victor Rabbi, yeah, but I'm actually not sure. Yeah. Um, could be Victor. And Victor, like, Victor is, is a nice guy, a very nice guy. Yeah. You know? So but maybe uh, that, that could be a fight as well. I mean, if that, he's that, still that hanging on to the fight. Down the line then as well. Yeah, exactly. That could be a fight Definitely. down the line. It's just, just going on with boxing. 100%. I mean, so let's talk about a couple of fights in your weight class. Obviously, Tyrone McKenna is coming up against O'Hara Davies in the final of the Golden Contract Tournament. Coming up, how do you see that fight going? I was actually looking, I was actually looking forward to that was. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, was, I was in London, I was in London the, for the week, like the week after. And um, something like, um, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I got called off. Yeah. I was sick. Yeah, like, oh. it's such a well, shame. As soon as that got called off, then I knew my foot was called off. Then that's why I was from out in London. And uh, I came out in London actually on the, the Wednesday. Or the, Wednesday was Thursday. That Monday was on lockdown. Yeah, Jesus. It, all, it did actually yeah, happen really quick, didn't it? But uh, how do you see that fight going with Tyrone, with Tyrone and O'Hara Davis? Um, sure, it's one you're interested in. Uh, O'Hara Davis is more just. He, he, He's a fighter, like he's a puncher, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big power puncher. He's not technical skills at all, he hasn't. Yeah, he has definitely. That's a criticism yeah. that's been leveled at him over the years, as or over the, even in in more recent times, is that he hasn't really developed any kind of his his boxing skills yeah. too much. And yeah, he's a big power puncher, but I, I, he's beatable really for a boxer. I haven't seen much of him. I haven't seen much of him, but how's he yeah. like? Has he been tested with his chin and stuff like that? Yeah, he's definitely been hit, but I mean. 
I, I think his first big test was Josh Taylor, who, to be honest, I mean, I mean again, I should probably be a little bit more objective about these things, uh, less opinion. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. Josh Taylor kind of uh, did a number on him, to be honest. I mean, but that's, that's probably the levels. I mean, you've seen where Josh Taylor has gone now. And Josh Taylor is debatably one of the most kind of, uh, in terms of ability, probably one of the best fighters in the whole world, you know, pound for pound. Yeah, yeah, and what he can actually yeah. do in the ring. And kind of when you put everything together, he's, he's exceptional. So he he did um, he hit O'Hara quite a lot and and put him down mm. and kind of the maybe the general consensus. Yeah, but he, he, he gets he gets tired, doesn't he? He gets a bit tired. Yeah, I I think because he 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 tries to load up a lot. Load you know, he has to set his feet and he tries to load up. Um, and his his thing is kind of is knocking guys out. But I think yeah, I saw I saw I actually saw the fight. I saw the fight where uh, with that with that twenty year old kid. What's his name? Um, you or something like that? Uh, I'm not uh, too far, sure now. Oh, wait, O'Hara Davis, is it? Yeah, in the, in the, his last week in the in the Golden Contract. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um. Oh, I can't remember the guy's name now. I should I should know this really, but I can't remember his name. But yeah. But he, um, I think he bullied that guy because he hasn't actually got his physical strength. Yeah. He, he wasn't really built, for, you know. And um, I think I heard I was just bullied him around the ring then. But yeah. the, the guy, you could see the difference with the guy. He had a, he had very good skills and stuff like that. And you could see him giving um, a higher day was a bit difficult. Yeah. So I think, I think if you, if you, if he's in, if you in with some, who has good technique and who has a good boxing brand, it will give him a terrible, terrible lot of trouble. Yeah. So do you see Tyrone McKenna having, having a lot of success in the fight or? Yeah, well, Tyrone's Taran, a great guy. He's a, he's a character, isn't he? <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's just, he's just, he could. It's cool. It's, it's interesting now to see which way he's like under, underneath, underneath Pete Taylor. Yeah. See how, he's, um, how, he, how he performs now because it's interesting to see how, how fighters develop, isn't it? Like when you go to new people, like because of the, the, the chat like and stuff like that. Um, I don't know now. I, I don't know because... Um, Danny, Danny Vaughn himself, like he, he's another very good trainer. But uh, we'll see, and it'd be interesting to see now. And it's a yeah. great fight for P to be in there with in the Golden Contract, like in the final. Definitely, him, you know. Yeah, definitely, it's great. It's 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 great for kind of all the parties involved because it is obviously it's, yeah, that's it's it, on it. a good stage, isn't it? Like Sky Sports, it, it's a big fight. It's going to be built as well, and so it's it's going to be. I, th- I don't think anybody can really come out too badly out of that situation you know what I mean yeah. especially not Tyrone because Tyrone is always in good fights you know he's a he likes I mean when I was speaking to him the other day he obviously was kind of going on about how he's very much a fan friendly fighter and he fights for the fans so he actually yeah, puts himself he gives the fans danger. What you want to see, yeah. he puts himself like, in danger because yeah, that's it. yeah do you know I mean he's a he's a you six know? foot one southpaw in the in the super lightweight division he could he could box on the back foot and use his size and range and, and box like that. And if he boxed like that against O'Hara Davis, he probably has a, a very, very good chance to kind of, to just outbox him. But, um, yeah, I, don't I think, think... Once, he, once he keeps him on the, on the, once he keeps sticking the jar out in his face, he could give him a lot yeah. of trouble there, I think. 100%. Yeah, I think. 100%. But look, we'll, we'll kind of move on slightly. Um, and I won't keep it for much longer, Pierce. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, no, 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 fair play to you. Um, just a few kind of interesting fights coming up. Um, I think it's it's important to keep kind of to look and f- to keep looking forward to the fights, um, rather than just getting kind of. I think some people are are very much, uh, you know, with the, the the virus and stuff, they kind of they can't see outside of their four walls now, and they're all getting a bit a bit yeah, depressed. Yeah, yeah. To keep looking forward to all these good fights that are coming up. But um, I think one interesting one that if we can if it can happen soon is. Joshua against Fury. Um, what do you think of that fight, and who do you think wins that one? Fury by knockout in the fifth or sixth round. Reckon, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you like? Why? I mean, that's a that's a pretty uh, definite prediction. So why why do you think you're hundred percent for Fury knockout? Can you break it down 100%. for us? Why do you think Fury gets it done? Uh, in that? He weighed in at, uh, what was it, 278 pounds his last fight against Wilder? Yeah. His last... And look at look what the weight, look what the difference he's already done. But yeah. Wilder, look, he just put, put put his weight on top of Wilder and that's it, Wilder couldn't, Wilder just fouled. Yeah. Um, but how important is, so then I suppose, 
I think a lot of people do that. They look at kind of how he boxed against Wilder in the rematch and they kind of think, okay, well, he can do that to Joshua. But then how, is it, how important is it to, to look at what Joshua brings to the table and then to kind of compare Joshua against Wilder? Apparently, again, think you, that look, Joshua brings look, uh, a little bit more to the table than Wilder, you know, in terms of boxing look about, skill. Look what, look what Fury done in the fourth fight against Wilder, where, yeah. where he's moving. I think, uh, I think um, Joshua, I think he's too stiff. Okay. Fury's, Fury's, uh, he's looking at the flyweight years in the heavyweight division. <laughs> yeah, and if he <laughs> does, that's the truth, though. You know, he always like a flyweight, and he's good. He's very, he's very good. And his very, his and ability he, to vary as well. Like he's actually, do you know why? He's a people's champs here. He, he, a lot of people, he, like, like for what he, what he done and what he come back from. Like it's like a lot of people out there were depressed and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I reckon they bounce back and now they have a job and stuff like that and mortgage is going for them again and look you don't know and I reckon there is like people like that where he's motivation speaking and stuff. yeah yeah obviously he's you know? an advocate for mental health and um, he's come out kind of uh, talked a lot about his own personal struggles and stuff and yeah and a fair play to him because he does seem to have helped a lot of people yeah so he's kind of he is he's that kind of role model and uh, yeah he's kind of a, a figure like a public figure now almost as well as yeah. uh, as well as just a an entertaining guy and a, and a great boxer but I do think it's an interesting fight I'm looking forward to I mean like if, if I was to allow myself an opinion I, I think Joshua puts up a, a lot better fight than Wilder does I think Joshua has a lot more to offer I think um, which I feel personally Joshua's kind of it's been a little bit unfair and like people are kind of overlooking him a little bit I think he, he brings a lot more to the table than Wilder did I think we're just being biased on. <laughs> <laughs> No, but look, I think it's great. it's a great fight, and I'm looking forward to when it, it is. It, it is. Can it's, happen. It, it will be. A, it will be a great fight, and please God, it does happen. Yeah, uh, definitely. But it'll happen in Saudi Arabia. Do you think so? I hope not. Yeah, I, think I it hope is. not. I mean, like I, again, I, I, I think the really, UK deserves really, I think the UK uh, deserves that. Really that money mm. Who? I think the UK deserves it. I mean, I know you're saying that the the money is in Saudi Arabia, and you know, the fighters will decide. Most likely, yeah, I'd be savage. It'd be savage if they did get it in the UK. Yeah, because you have tons of Irish as well going over there. Hundred percent. Yeah, I know. No, I'd, be, be, I'd be making my way over for that one. Deadly, deadly. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be amazing. Yeah. But um, look, we'll move on to a couple more, and I think a, an important one as well is Carl Frampton. Obviously, one of the, if if not probably our leading boxer from from the Ireland of Ireland over the last, I don't know, probably the better part of ten years now. Um, Carl really, really has led the way, obviously with, with the likes of Katie as well and, and a few other names in there. But Carl is obviously kind of scheduled in there to fight Jamel Herring for the WBO uh, Super Featherweight title. Kind That's of really it. What do you think of that fight, if you know much about it? And uh, what do you give, how do you give Carl, what chances do you give Carl in that fight? Um... Yeah, I really, I really rate Carl in that, that fight. I think... Yeah. Uh, I think that'd be a great fight. It'd be a great, great fight to win the title from, anyways. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I want. 100%. Um, it's just, Carl, he was in training camp and stuff like that, wasn't he? And you would see yeah. he was getting his hunger back and stuff like that again. Definitely. So I think once this is all over and, he, and the fight, he's back in camp and stuff, I reckon he'd be a lot, lot more hungry on now than he yeah. was. And he, you could see a different car. You might see a different car front. No one knows. Yeah, definitely. No, I mean, no, I hope that no I think he, he definitely, he perhaps over the the last few fights, he maybe hasn't been quite the same. I mean, the Josh Warrington fight obviously got a little bit wrong, etc. Yeah. But um, I think I think he definitely has. He's got enough left, hasn't he, to to win titles, to to win more titles, and to 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 win this fight against Jamel Herring, who obviously is a, is a very good champion in his own right, but. Again, another really good fight that we're looking forward to. Maybe a card that you'd be looking to get on as well if they hold it in Northern Ireland. Yeah, uh, yeah. Please God, there's actually there's some words, some some words uh, that was was meant to be on about stuff like that. But obviously, the fight can go ahead. So yeah, and um, but it'd be nice. It would have been. It'd be great. Yeah, Definitely. it would have been great to go ahead to get on the Mike Connor show and feel it. That would yeah, have been in the Festival. Yeah, uh, that would have been oh, exceptional. That would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we said, look, I mean, maybe well, these things have all that ahead of us anyways, isn't it? That's the main exactly. thing. Exactly. I mean, next year, all these things are going to happen again. Yeah, and live and healthy. That's, that's the main thing. That's the main thing, pal. And look, well, the last mm-hmm. couple of things I'll, I'll, I'll kind of touch on before I let you go. Uh, just staying on that kind of uh, super featherweight division, because I think it's an interesting one in Ireland at the moment, because you've got Carl obviously campaigning now for that world title, but John always kind of leading the way probably for, for Irish boxers at that weight, especially with that really good win against Scott Quigg just a couple of months back. If John has come out course. recently, yeah, it was a great performance. Do you want to speak a little bit about yeah. that performance? Um, yeah. Um, he, I know John was a fight and stuff like that, and everyone, so does everyone else. But I was been looking on his uh, training, I've been looking at his training camp coming up towards and. Um, when he was in Spain, he's posting his um, Instagram stories. Yeah. Um, and it was just, I didn't know, I didn't, I was like, he's fighting, he's doing a bit, he's, doing, he's training different than he is. And obviously, my cunt man, and a very, very good friend of mine, um, Noel, Noel Bourne, yeah. is his cunt man also. And um, I was saying to Noel, and he's like, I don't know what's happening, but he's, he's, up and, he's up and sharp, like really, really sharp, and he's excited. So, I said, look, you can just see it tonight, and, he went down, and I thought he was just going to stand there and the brawl with him and like let him a letter. Yeah. He just stepped back in front of one, two, and he stood on the back foot and put the pressure on when he needed it. And yeah. It was a great performance. Very yeah, good. It really, really was. It was. I it couldn't was believe it. I actually couldn't believe it. I didn't think he could actually box like that, to be honest with you. I thought it was just all, you know? Yeah, kind Obviously, of. Obviously, I would lay the and some stuff that in the background it was great. It was great. Yeah, great no, it was, it was a great performance. And what do you think of. Uh, maybe a fight between Carl and Jono. How do you see a fight like that going? And what, what would that fight do for Ireland? I mean, I think given if, if Jono was able to have one or two more big fights and then went into a, a world title fight with, with Carl Frampton in Ireland, I mean, what would that yeah, do yeah. For, for the country and for boxing in, in this country? Um, I, I, it's, Jono, it's actually kind of hard. Maybe, maybe the youth of Jono might take the fight over Carl, you know? Yeah. And so, and... Um, but um, like and Carl can take a dig as well. Like he, he he's been hit he's been hit hard. Yeah. And he he stood up like he hadn't gone down from it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a it's a hard one. Maybe the hunger of Jono may take it. Yeah. You know, and obviously just because don't know, but because Carl is maybe at the at the back end of his career, perhaps. Back end of his yeah, exactly. Of course, of course. But look, if there was a title on the line, a world title. Yeah. And the two went out. Jesus, we Boris yeah. boxing would have been. I'd be building. Ah, it'd be excellent man it would be it would really would be, be yeah, amazing it'd be really good. but I mean yeah look I really appreciate your time Pierce I mean I'm not going to take too much too much more of your time I really appreciate it I hope you're doing well man and I hope everyone around you is doing well but um, yeah do you have any Sorry. kind of messages for anyone who uh, who may be who may be watching you know people are maybe finding it difficult at this time and you know maybe you can say some things that, that help you in, in these times um, of just stay positive just, just stay positive everyone um, it's always at the end of the tunnel and it's only a matter of time now when everything be back to normal you just have to just be patient that's it every, at this current time now every, um, everyone's patience is being tested yeah so don't go around silly and don't don't go up the line just, just stay focused stay in and get out for your exercises when you need it get out for your exercises exactly at the, at Please God, by the, by the end of this year, everything's back to normal. I hope so, man. As soon as possible. Hopefully soon. Uh, it's looking like, all, looking like August, isn't it? The end of August, yeah. everything's back to normal. Exactly. Um, get everything wears off and stuff like that. Please God, everything just forgets about it by the end of, by the end of this year and then starts the new year fresh. Yeah, hopefully, man. As soon as possible, if please we can get, a, get out to the shows and see you box again, Pierce. Please God, please God. Look, I really appreciate your time, mate, and we'll talk again, hopefully sometime in the near future, all right? Yeah, sounds, Sam. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Pierce. All the best, man. Thanks a lot. Take it easy.